Well, here we are. We've arrived at day three of Passion Week. And day three is also a very special celebration on God's calendar. It's called Passover. And there's a really good reason why this Old Testament story of something amazing God did overlaps the New Testament story of another amazing thing that God did for us. So without speaking too long about it, because you can find so many good teachings out there about Passover and the purpose for God asking his people to remember what happened to his children so many, many years ago. And so let's revisit that just for a moment. The children of Israel were living in Egypt. Egypt was bondage. Very most (laughs) uh, obviously bondage. They were slaves. And there they were, bound by a power that they could not get free from on their own. And if we turn to our scripture that we've kind of referred to already, day one, day two, and now day three, let's go to Psalms 107 again. Down in verse 10, it says, Some sat in darkness in the shadow of death. Now that was the children of Israel living in Egypt the night of Passover. They were sitting in darkness in the shadow of death because physically, in reality, death was passing by. God had told them, death is coming and here's what you have to do. The scripture says in verse 10, some sat in darkness and in the shadow of death, prisoners in affliction and in irons, for they had rebelled against the words of God and spurned the counsel of the Most High. Yes, God's children had turned against him, and that's what took them into bondage to begin with. They rejected who he was and what he gave them, what he brought to them. So reading a little further, they had spurned the counsel of the Most High. And in verse 12, it says, this is Psalms 107. In verse 12, it says, so he bowed their hearts down with hard labor. They fell down with none to help. They were buried under the oppression that was pressing them down. And then in verse 13, it says, then they cried to the Lord in their trouble. Oh, that we would cry to the Lord in our trouble today. And we have been all over our nation, all over the world. You just go on YouTube, just find, just kind of scroll. And I bet you'll see somewhere somebody is having prayer with the multitudes, even though they're not together because they have to be social distancing, but they're praying. They're praying for our nation. They're praying for our world. They're bowing their heads. And I want us to think about that right now. The children of Israel, they humbled themselves. They were obedient to what God told them to do. They put the blood of the perfect spotless lamb on the doorpost of their homes. And they went to bed resting easy, trusting that God said he would pass over their house and they would be protected. And so, and so here we are, we're at Passover. And we're worried. What does God tell us? In verse 13, then they cried to the Lord in their trouble. He delivered them from their distress. 
I believe God's about to deliver us from a very distressful experience. But more than that, I believe God has already delivered us from every burden, every heartache, every oppression that could ever come against us because he sent his son, Jesus Christ, over 2,000 years ago. And you can read all about that in the New Testament. That's in the Bible. That Jesus came and he was that perfect, spotless lamb. And he died on a cross and his blood can be applied to our lives and death will pass over us. Now, what does that mean? Because we all have family members that have died. Of course, death did not pass over. But yes, death does pass over because we have been made with eternity in our hearts. And there is that spark of eternity that will live on longer and farther than we could imagine beyond this fleshly life. And there is a decision to make this Passover night. Will you trust the instructions of God? And will you receive the blood of his spotless lamb? And would you apply it to your life? It says in verse 14 of Psalms 107, he brought them out of darkness and the shadow of death. I just find this scripture so compelling because that's what Jesus does for us every day. We just have to trust. We just have to know in our hearts. And if for some reason fear is gripping your heart, There's no reason to be down on yourself or be critical of yourself. And that is not what I'm doing, being critical. But you don't have to be afraid because the power of God is real. The power of God lives. The power of God reigns. We just need to receive his power into our lives. And so I want to sing a song tonight that speaks to that fear that most assuredly has at least fluttered in your heart during this very challenging period in our nation's history. But we do not have to be bound by those fears the way the children of Israel were. We can be set free. Yeah. 
protection on this Passover night. Help us know you. Help us look to you. Help us trust you and help us obey you. Thank you so much. In Jesus name. And if you want to hear this song in its um, original form, the title is No Longer Slaves. And you can look that one up on YouTube. Uh, I forgot to look to see who did this one originally. I think it's Bethel Music, but I could be wrong about that. 
uh, but you'll find it. If you look on YouTube, just type No Longer Slaves Christian Music. And thank you for listening. You stayed this long. And if you've listened to day one and day two, I really appreciate it. See you tomorrow. Passover day four. <laughs>